once upon a time, in a country where it was dangerous to speak of the heart, a young boy picked up a violin. He filled its silent belly with his landlocked dreams, shadows that wait on the stair, the tug of desire. He filled it with wind shivering the Danube, the prison bars that held his father, a grey wolf and the hawfinch that would come in spring. And then he played, and the dreams and the wolf and the light on the river all flew out, spiralling over borders, lifting the sky. My musical life started in Budapest, Hungary, where I was born. When I was eight years old, I started to play the violin and my parents were very, very happy when I showed a lot of talent for it. Everybody told that I am very talented. They were happy because my father was in prison after the 1956 revolution against the Soviet Union, the communist system, and they knew that if I'm choosing to be economist like my parents been, um, it's, it's a big, big disadvantage that the father is politically an enemy. But in the arts field, we could be somehow freer. Did you ever have a desire to be a solo? No, never been, a, never. Psychologically, I've never been this, somebody who goes alone on the stage and showing the knowledge. I always were, was attracted to chamber music. So when I was 18 years old, I got into the Francis Music Academy in Budapest. Growing up and studying in a communist system, I'm sure it's positively affected us as musicians. One of the things I remember, we knew that in the, in the society, of course in communist system, in the society you cannot express freely opinions. But we knew, and the teachers also told us, outside of the music academy, you have to keep your mouth shut. You have to three times thinking through what you're saying. But here, inside the building, you can express everything. You must express everything. Because music, anyway, is a spiritual medicine. Music is, is expressing what words cannot. So it was perfect, the whole thing, that we could really express everything with music. In the Music Academy, in the 1970s second half part, was a kind of golden period with phenomenal genius teachers. And then when I was 19, we formed the Tokaj String Quartet. I am the luckiest guy in the world because I met three phenomenal friends and musicians. So, we won big international competitions whilst we were still in the Music Academy. And between the age of 19 and 36, when I played 17 years in the Tokaj Quartet, we played more than 1,000 concerts all over the world in four continents. So we had a beautiful life. It was very hard work, very hard life, but beautiful, fulfilling. In my private life, I, I did not have really serious um, affairs because I, I was 100% concentrating on music making. I just non-stop um, thought about just music. Suddenly, once in Tokyo, during a concert, we played Bartok Fifth String Quartet, and I felt that I cannot use the whole bow. Two, three weeks later in the United States during a concert, I felt, oh, I can use even less bow. The technique is going down uh, drastically, mm -hmm. the ability. So this was my, I, I showed it now, this was the problem which I devel developed. In 88 came, never in my life, never could solve it. This is one of the big defeats of my life. I, suddenly I was so blocked that got up and went out, stopping a concert is catastrophe. I mean, it's like nightmare, imagine. I was a kind of successful person who almost everybody liked very much, 
Suddenly I found myself in a situation not playing very well and everybody is frustrated with me, even myself. October 20th was my very last concert in the Takács Quartet in London, Law Society. Haydn, Bartok, Beethoven was the program, but it, it, I was struggling and, and we knew it's not going on. It is impossible. So we agreed in a, in a kitchen, in our friend's kitchen, in the Holland Park, 1992, end of October, one of these days, that I, I am leaving the quartet. It was obvious, so it was, it was painful. With years, it became clearer and clearer, and now it's totally clear that the whole thing was in the, in the brain. In, in this, now I know. Today I know that I could not solve many problems, and I think maybe the brain, the subconscious, was sabotaging um, the the whole muscle functions. So the subconscious became my enemy. Yeah. You know, the mind can sabotaging and, and blocking the physicality. Days the sky is a low roof, hand choked, elbows stuttering with shame, his arm a snared bow, horsehair strung from fingertip to shoulder blade. Perhaps these days he is a violin, tuned so tight one breath would split the fingerboard, fell the bridge, snapped strings whipping. He remembers rain, the times he let them down, his father's voice, the phone box etched with shame. Then this, here in the dark, a lover, resting the neck in her palm. She cradles the body, loosens the pegs just in time. On the other hand, I maybe fate organized this because now the story turned differently. 1991, when I was uh, struggled with playing in the Stockhaus Quartet, but we played with George Scholte, the famous conductor. We played in London and Vienna Mozart Piano Quartet. Suddenly he turns to me whilst we playing Kabor, you could be one day a, a brilliant conductor because your body language is very clear. This was in 91, but it remained there. Brilliant Hungarian musician, violinist and conductor Tibor Varga. He called me, Gabor, could you conduct my orchestra? Because there is an, a special concert and I am not in, in Switzerland. I told him, yes, but Mr. Varga, I never conducted. And he told me, oh, I'm giving you your first lesson. So I conducted this concert and I loved it, this concert, and I felt that I am talented. And after it's, it's I knew this is my, my new life. I loved it. Yes. No. Yes. And dance. Yes. And I am also, this is my dream when I'm in front of an orchestra, how to make them, everybody listens, everybody 
everybody is helping, everybody, everybody is a motor in an orchestra. I'm not their boss, they are not my slaves. Of course I am the, the leader, but I am just inspiring them, but I am one of many. I try to be, I try to be using this, this human experience, friendship, helping each other. Even in my troubles, when I, I hardly could play the biggest darkness, there was already a possibility for the light. Those days was awful. I have I very sorry for my former colleagues. They went through awful times. It's terrible what happened. Thanks to my wife, she always believed me. I'm really so grateful to her because even in my most difficult times, she went through terrible times with me because when I was not successful as a player. And, but she always believed in me. But after, because I found the conducting and I can go on stage now also. I can be with music, with a different repertoire. Plus the, the orchestra repertoire is phenomenal. I went through so many emotions, but as a musician today, I feel I am somewhere richer because I went through so many extreme feelings of human feelings that I understand maybe better and deeper a Mozart or Beethoven. One of the psychiatrists who went through m many, many times in Budapest, he became my friend and he told me he or she goes to a cinema theater or concert Hall, they going back to childhood suddenly because they want to forget their problems, they want to go into the fairy tale. So I learned as a musician that the public, we, I have to put them into child, in the childhood situation, and we are telling a fairy tale, but fairy tale has to be told by theatrical way, honestly, but not normally. So you, I know you will come tomorrow to the concert. I, I will try to put you into childhood and we will tell a fairy tale with each note. <laughs> I'm a conductor who was a violinist, 
but I'm saying I'm a musician. Mm. That I'm not, uh, uh, I'm still a musician. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole thing. What the dark is for. To rest the sky. To wrap the glare. To help us better see the light. To hide inside, to hold despair. To rest the sky, to wrap the glare. To lose the edge where stone meets air. To paint a hole. To make a night. To rest the sky, to wrap the glare. To help us better see the light. <laughs> 